Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage co-founder and chairman of Block and chairman, Chamber of Digital Commerce, Matthew Rozak. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. There's this uh, cliche that some speakers um, don't need an introduction. And even while being widely renowned, um, rarely uh, address forums like this. So it's uh, an honor uh, to introduce my dear friend, Jihan Wu. Jihan um, is known as the CEO of Bitmain, the largest manufacturer of cryptocurrency mining hardware and other services uh, such as mining pools. And since 2013, uh, Bitmain has developed into uh, one of the world's largest purveyors of cryptocurrency hardware uh, services and, uh, and, and is a large semiconductor firm in its own right. Uh, they've also applied a lot of these uh, innovations and skill sets into other areas such as artificial intelligence. And Jihan uh, is uh, w one of China's first crypto advocates and um, was, was also the first to translate Satoshi Nakamoto's white paper into Chinese. And today, uh, he'll be talking about something completely different, but certainly no less transformational. And so uh, I'll end it here, because I know Jihan has to catch a flight right after his talk. And so please help me, ladies and gentlemen, in welcoming Jihan Wu. Uh, thanks for everybody coming to uh, uh, this summit, and uh, thanks for the uh, great organization um, job uh, done by uh, the Chamber of uh, uh, Digital. Thanks. Uh, I'm Jihan Wu, the co-founder of Bitmain. Uh, in the early days, um, I translated the Satoshi's uh, white paper into Chinese, and I got all my savings into Bitcoin. Uh, and that's how I started my uh, careers uh, in the uh, cryptocurrency area. Uh, today, I would like to uh, talk about the private central banks, uh, such kind of a new uh, uh, business model that may evolve in the future. Um, first, I would like to uh, define uh, what I talk ab about today, a central bank's definition. Uh, it's a kind of institution that manages the legal currency, uh, including uh, money supply, interest rates, and a foreign exchange rate uh, for an economy. The economy can be either a state uh, or kind of a virtual entity, such as a kind of online game community or monetary tools in a specific industries. Uh, for example, maybe um, taxi industry in a city or in uh, multiple states can share the same currency in the uh, industry. Uh, so uh, the central bank's uh, definition may be expanded a little bit uh, than we uh, uh, used to talk about. Um, in the past uh, decades, that it used to be uh, unquestioned uh, that uh, the government only uh, manages the um, function uh, to the government's most important function is to maintain a currency system and to issue money uh, in a um, monopolistic way. Uh, that uh, the government is uh, uh, owning entity can issue the currencies on the market because governments have the most strong uh, credibility in a nation and the currency uh, is backed by such kind of a credibility. Um, but uh, uh, in 1976, uh, that uh, uh, Hayek uh, wrote this book called a decent, uh, denationalization of money. Uh, in this book, he advocates a competitive free trade in the central banking business, that uh, in a um, nation, that uh, there should be multiple entities that can issue and manage the currencies. And uh, through such kind of a free trade competition, the best kind of money and the most stable of uh, money will evolve in such kind of a uh, market. Um, and uh, uh, 
even though uh, his uh, theory got some kind of um, uh, tests in the history, uh, in some rare cases, it's um, done in China, in Russian history, that uh, some small time, small period of time in history that uh, Hayek's uh, theories uh, got some kind of evidence, but uh, it's not widely tested. But uh, since the internet uh, expanded in the world and the internet continues to reduce entry barrier to establish a central bank, um, and the businesses that were impractical, I mean, the private central bank business that were impractical in the past now become uh, very practical because to establish currency is much more easier than before. Um, and uh, we all know that in the online gaming industry, being a central banker is kind of a common experience. When I talk with uh, some kind of um, uh, game developers, uh, they said that in the past 10 years, or his life, that uh, he knows what uh, kind of central banks do. They need to manage two currencies in the same online, commu uh, online game communities. And uh, they see obvious reactions um, of the community if they change the monetary policy uh, in the um, uh, online gaming uh, community. Uh, so they know what, what kind of uh, monetary uh, policy changes can, um, uh, what kind of a reaction the uh, community will take. Uh, so um, in such kind of uh, uh, virtual uh, community, those current policy, we know that is in independent. Uh, they manage it by the um, owner of such kind of game and uh, uh, they're subject to monetary policy changes as a way to control the virtual economy uh, in the game. Sometimes there will be economic uh, crisis happening uh, in their community. They need to use and inject more currencies. And sometimes they say that the currencies must be too much there and the people are getting lazy and doing nothing. And so they are tightening their monetary supply. Um, and the exchange rate is kind of uh, free floating, uh, usually against the five currencies, but uh, they are well managed. Um, and um, in such kind of um, uh, community, there is no capital control in most cases because uh, that's how those uh, participants in those games to exchange the virtual currencies in the game with the five currencies. Um, but uh, such kind of uh, virtual currencies establish in those uh, virtual game, it's uh, centralized in their database. And uh, actually, it's very hard to exchange uh, with uh, other currencies. And in some rare cases, those uh, listeners of the game will try to control uh, the exchange rate uh, with the outside world. And it's, uh, it's essentially kind of a capital control. Um, but uh, since blockchain technology right now have been established for like uh, nine years, uh, the, tech uh, the technical barrier to run such kind of a central bank uh, that without a border uh, getting accepted by the whole internet uh, is much more easier. Um, to Right now, to issue a kind of a private money um, is quite easy. Maybe in the beginning, such kind of currency maybe not will accept it, but at least theoretically, everybody on the internet can use their private money that is issued by, uh, uh, by an such kind of entity or enterprise. Uh, in the beginning of uh, the Bitcoin's history, the beginning with like a one person, two person, three person who trying to uh, play with the Bitcoin money. Uh, and uh, we can see that the community expanded from a very few people. And right now there are tens of millions of uh, Bitcoin users uh, around the world. Um, uh, in the last year, Bitcoin Cash uh, forked from Bitcoin, and uh, lots of other cryptocurrencies are also coexisted uh, in this world. Um, all their uh, currency policies actually is very independent. Most of them, uh, their uh, current uh, monetary policies are written in a distributed network and are very, very hard to change. And uh, maybe we can say that the mathematic functions uh, of uh, this currency is kind of uh, uh, virtu uh, central bankers uh, in uh, this um, uh, such kind of money. And uh, the exchange rate is free floating and uh, highly volatile and uh, low capital controls uh, in such kind of uh, uh, 
money. Oh, sorry. Uh, one question that we need to ask is that if there is a really market for private central banks and it's all free trading, uh, will there be too many kinds of currencies? Uh, in Hayek's book, that he speculated that instead of uh, uh, entering an uh, unmanageable number of currencies, uh, markets would converge on only one or a limited number of monetary standards, and uh, which institutions would base the use of their notes. He believes that uh, after such kind of uh, uh, free trade competitions, the market will consolidate into a few currencies. Uh, and the, in the past few years, the blockchain technologies uh, lowered the barrier to use private monies. And um, we have seen that um, maybe the realistic uh, situation is quite different from a uh, high uh, speculation. Uh, right now, there are like uh, uh, more than uh, 1,500 cryptocurrencies uh, of, uh, or virtual tokens that are followed by uh, CoinMarketCap.com. Um, and uh, we also can see that the Bitcoin's dominance has been declining, and the majority of the goals come from uh, altcoins. Um, Bitcoin used to be very dominant on the market, and for uh, quite a long time, that it takes market share more than 95%. And uh, during that time, uh, people speculated that uh, since currencies kind of um, uh, have a, a very strong network effect. If a currency have a dominant today, it must have a dominance in the tomorrow. However, uh, the fact is that uh, the Bitcoin's dominance has been declining, and uh, we see that lots of other cryptocurrencies like Ethereum, uh, like uh, AEO, like Dash, uh, just uh, grow very fast. and. Uh, you just cannot explain that if you think that uh, uh, the theory is right, that uh, the uh, market will consolidate, because uh, the Bitcoin in the beginning is already consolidated. And why uh, so many kinds of uh, cryptocurrencies uh, uh, be there and uh, take the most of the uh, gross shares on the market? And uh, we can see that uh, on lots of the merits, that uh, the cryptocurrencies are competing with each other. Uh, they are talking about uh, security, legitimacy, uh, privacy, uh, decentralization, about the cost, about the speed to make transactions, or the capacity, and uh, what kind of applications they are going to support, and so on and so on. Um, because those merits are so much, and uh, you only uh, one cryptocurrency cannot cover them all. There's no perfect cryptocurrencies on the market, so uh, the market will require lots of uh, kind of uh, cryptocurrencies. And uh, maybe right now it's uh, still very early days in the blockchain technology. The technology is uh, still evolving, and every new innovation is trying to establish their own cryptocurrencies on the market. So it's becoming more and more uh, kinds of uh, cryptocurrencies on the market. Mm, it also can be explained because there are so many uh, volatility in the market, and people seeing the uh, e examples of uh, people uh, getting into early into Bitcoin or Ethereum, make a huge of um, make huge money out of it, and uh, maybe the late conversations that oh maybe it's right now it's too late to get into Bitcoin. I must have found something new. Maybe I can repeat the story, good stories of other people. So people always need a new uh, currencies. Um, lots of explanation on this. Um, so uh, a small conclusion here is that hack might be wrong on the consolidation of currency market if there is a free trade. Um, uh, because the customer on the market, uh, people who um, put their savings into money or put investment into the uh, different monies, maybe they just need diversification, they need different kind of uh, uh, virtual currencies. Um, Mm. Uh, blockchain also uh, give rise to uh, virtual tribes that want to use their own tokens to function as a currency. 
the most significant examples uh, is uh, the recently the Telegram, a very um, uh, popular uh, instant messenger application focused on privacy, decide to issue their uh, own currencies, own tokens into their ecosystem. They did not adopt any other five currencies or existing cryptocurrencies, but they just uh, choose to create their own uh, cryptocurrencies. Um, such kind of uh, currencies exchange rate uh, highly depends on the success of their ecosystem. If the ecosystem uh, expanded uh, very fast and into very large scale, it's likely that uh, the currency's exchange rate will, will be appreciated. Will be appreciated. Um, one reason to explain this is that the lateral effect has become common sense for business after the internet's mass adoption. Uh, in the past, the so-called lateral effect is not uh, so popular or so common, but after the internet, uh, mass adoption is becoming more and more. Uh, we can. Uh, I use some examples like eBay, Taobao, Tencent, Uber, DD, Google, Microsoft. They all rely on lots of users are using the same service or uh, doing trade in the same network. So it become kind of a barrier for new cam for new players to get into this market. And the most uh, widely collected ecosystem is the most useful, most powerful ecosystems on the market. Uh, some other kind of businesses also uh, important uh, with the uh, uh, network effect, like exchange business. If exchange uh, in the uh, same kind of uh, uh, goods, uh, they have the most traders, they will have the most liquidity, and uh, it's unlikely that some new competitors will be uh, evolved to um, uh, winning the game, like instant messaging industry like uh, Telegram, MSN, Tencent, uh, they all rely on such kind of uh, network effect uh, to build their entry barrier uh, against potential new uh, competitors. Uh, in such kind of uh, network effect business, it's uh, widely known that the early users are very critical to the success of such network effects. Uh, so uh, most of startups decide to uh, incentive their early users by subsidiaries or giving cash. One example is that Didi uh, and uh, quite a lot of uh, competitors of Uber in China in its early uh, days, uh, they subsidize uh, their users like a crazy. Just like a one Chinese yuan, you can take a ride of such kind of taxi that's just uh, open to uh, US dollar. It's um, as cheap as crazy. Uh, they want to bring early users, onboard early users to their uh, network, uh, to their ecosystem. Um, however, uh, we can see that uh, there is a kind of a discrepancy uh, when cash is giving as kind of incentive. Uh, for example, uh, if DD is giving like uh, $10 per ride uh, to its early adopters, and uh, the other day, another competitor come in and give this like uh, $11, and uh, the customers will move to Quiddy to its competitors. Um, what the enterprise want to build is a long-term success of such kind of lateral effect ecosystem. However, if your incentive is giving like a cash, there is a kind of discrepancy in the um, durability of uh, your incentive. Y you want to uh, make sure that your customers stay in your ecosystem as long as possible but uh, your incentive is giving just like a uh, one time as cash. So uh, right now, uh, a very um, popular model in the uh, tokenization economies is that to offer kind of financial tools that uh, such kind of token will be given to uh, the early adopters of the network and uh, the value of uh, such kind of token will associate it uh, with the long-term success of such kind of network effect. Um, uh, for example, uh, an exchange in the market offered a uh, token to its early traders uh, of exchange, and um, the exchange will use 20% of its profit to buy back the tokens that is floated on the market and to destroy it. As a whole, we can see that the exchange is uh, essentially to uh, give the value or the profit earned by the exchanges 
to the tokens owner, and it provides kind of support for the long-term uh, tokens uh, value. And uh, if the exchange is success in the long term, the token will be worth more. And if the exchange failed, the token may be worth nothing. Um, um, such kind of uh, financial tools is uh, quite like equity, but uh, with some differences. It's a uh, low share uh, right holder, uh, share uh, holder rights like uh, voting rights uh, or uh, anti dilutions. It's more, but it with more liquidity and uh, more flexibility uh, between the uh, enterprise and uh, the early pass participants of the ecosystem. Uh, and there are lots of uh, such ecosystem is trying to uh, be built in on the internet today. Uh, lots of startups, and uh, we will likely to see thousands of such kind of tokens or private currencies on the internet. Um, uh, about the regulation, I think most of such kind of tokens will fall will be very likely fall into the definition of security and subject to the regulation of uh, securities. Uh, but I believe that the regulators need to uh, prepare good answers to such kind of um, uh, new business uh, innovations uh, and uh, increase uh, efficiency to build such kind of ecosystem. And it's uh, uh, very um, important uh, com uh, competition tools. Uh, if other things equal, I believe uh, enterprise uh, providing such kind of incentives to its early adopters will have a strong advantage over ones that do not uh, provide such kind of incentives. Um, uh, people may uh, ask questions that if uh, there will be inconvenience if there are too many currencies on the market. My answer is no, because uh, right now lots of uh, decentralized uh, exchange are being built uh, among all these currencies. I think in the coming years, people will find that uh, if you, even there are thousands of such kind of currencies, uh, for example, merchants may choose to accept the uh, currency A, and uh, the uh, consumers hold only like a currency B. And uh, the consumers will be able to use his currency B to pay thousands of other uh, currencies uh, that is accepted by tens of thousands of merchants. And uh, he will not uh, feel uh, any inconvenience because there is a kind of decentralized Visa and a MasterCard uh, uh, protocol uh, running behind. Um, Another question is that if such kind of private currencies will only exist it, uh, in the virtual world, like a uh, gaming industry or instant messenger applications or other uh, things is not uh, real, uh, my answer is no, I don't think so. Um, I believe that uh, uh, private central banks will evolve, that uh, some private companies will decide that their business is to uh, wrong as a private central bank. They will prov provide services to tribes, to industries, to even to nations that they decide to outsource their um, monetary issues to such kind of private central bank. Um, and uh, the private central bank can export their business to areas where people lose confidence, maybe in their own, in their own governments. Um, let's imagine that a private company located in place A and aligned with a committee of uh, central bankers in different areas of the world. The experts in the currency or monetary um, policy problems uh, and they have a strong credibility on the market, more strong credibility, more experienced on the monetary problems than those uh, local governments or local uh, uh, political leaders. And um, the rich kind of um, contracts uh, with those uh, local political leaders and uh, governments, and they outsourced uh, their uh, central banking to such kind of uh, private central banks. Um, such kind of uh, private central banks will use their credibility and experience to manage the uh, local currency issues uh, for such kind of relations. And uh, maybe the citizens will have a strong confidence in the stability of their currency. Um, we all know that uh, a central bank is a very profitable business, like a Federal Reserve uh, in 2016, they earned uh, $92 billion. You know, yes, Swiss Central Bank is another good example that a $55 billion uh, net profit was made in 2017. Uh, and uh, such kind of uh, private central banks will share a majority uh, of their uh, profit with those um, 
local community, local relations that who give permission or license to run uh, their business. Um, and uh, for such kind of uh, private center banks, the, I believe they will have advantages to adopt uh, new technologies uh, to make a more, to creating more convenient user experiences for consumers than, mo than lots of uh, governments and um, government-backed central banks. Um, we all know that there are two billion unbanked people in the world. Um, and we also know that in lots of countries, every generation of our population uh, have every hyper inflation. Uh, I believe that a, a free trade market of uh, private central banks can save such kind of a situation. Um, and uh, I believe that uh, in the next, after a few years, maybe 10 years, uh, governments who just uh, against the free trade, uh, free market of central banks will be criticized by the public because the public knows that uh, the competition is good and uh, if the government still holds a strong monopoly uh, on the currency market, there must be something uh, the government wants from them people and uh, it's bad. Um, and uh, I also believe that the AML like, and uh, uh, regulation will be quite important for such kind of business uh, because uh, if the financial network works with uh, criminal, I don't think uh, it uh, will be a good store of value. An example is that the e-gold uh, was trying to uh, build kind of currency that is backed up by, by the gold, but not uh, backed up by US government. But uh, lots of uh, criminal activities was happen, uh, was happening in the network, and uh, so it was shut down. Uh, and uh, lots of uh, e-gold uh, um, accounting uh, account holders uh, suffer huge losses uh, financially. Um, what should be the best strategy for the governments around the world? I think that uh, they should embrace it. I think it will happen anyway. There is huge demand on such kind of good uh, and uh, stable currencies. And in lots of areas, that people want kind of independent currencies. Like what happened in the Europe, we found that uh, different nations does not, maybe they just don't want a kind of a unified currency. They want to have their independent currencies. Maybe they just want to borrow more money from the monetary system. Maybe some other countries want to uh, hold their uh, currencies more stable. It's different. This is a fraction world. Every nation, every area want different currencies. Uh, and uh, such kind of business will increase the efficiency of the economy and uh, it's a new kind of business, new industry. Uh, I believe that uh, the government should provide a very good friendly regulation environment for such kind of business. Uh, and Bitman right now are very interested in such kind of um, early startup, early startup of a private central bank. Uh, so um, we would like to invest in 20 to 30 startups uh, that uh, they focus on such kind of uh, unique emerging industry. Uh, maybe it was just a serious story before, but I believe that it will be very practical in the future. And the startups can focus on the uh, monetary policy research and the technology, or they can be uh, marketing and sales um, originated business. Um, and uh, um, we are very welcoming Dex that to this email address. Thank you. Uh, yeah.